Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? If you've watched many of my previous videos, you probably know I'm a big fan of the original Game Boy Advance. I've shown a decent number of mods for this console over the years, but this time, let's put them all together and build the best handheld we can. So 2020 has just been hot garbage for pretty much all of us, yeah. Well, there's one good thing that we've gotten, and it's a lot of awesome new retro handheld gaming upgrades. I was sent a bunch of mod parts from the folks over at Handheld Legend and Retro 6, and together they pretty much represent all of the best upgrades you can get for the GBA, at least at the time this video went live. I started by disassembling the donor console. Instead of keeping the original reflective screen, I went with a funny playing IPS display upgrade. I've done a video on this one. The results are just amazing, and I wouldn't imagine doing a Game Boy build of any sort without including an IPS kit. What I installed that screen into is something I'm equally impressed by. These are brand new replacement shells from Retro 6. They come in several color options and include replacement buttons and membranes. These shells were designed specifically for use with the IPS display, so you don't have to modify them at all. Just set the screen into the upper right corner. I skipped installing the double-sided tape on the display because I was also sent these neat little 3D printed brackets to hold it in place. Not having that adhesive makes any future mods or repairs way easier. Next, I could solder a few wires to the display ribbon adapter cable for the brightness control. It's an optional step, so if you don't want to do any soldering, you can skip it. The default screen brightness is just fine in most cases, especially if you're indoors. Then I worked on the GBA's motherboard for a minute to install a clean amp module to make the console's speaker louder. On the original Game Boy Advance, it gets placed in the lower right corner of the board, opposite the volume wheel. I used a piece of 3M VHB tape to stick it down, then soldered the wires that connect it to the GBA, along with the replacement speaker it comes with. The other end of the display brightness wires got soldered to the select and shoulder buttons next. I slid the ribbon cable under the screen bracket to hold it down, then connected the screen cable to the adapter ribbon. I got the buttons installed in the front panel and dropped in the motherboard. Then I could lock the adapter ribbon cable into its connector on the motherboard and get the shell all buttoned up. After the back housing went on, all I had to do was stick down the new glass screen cover. There's one last mod, and it's related to power. Original GBAs run off of AA batteries, and that's fine, but I went with a rechargeable option in the form of the Retro 6 Clean Juice. It's a lithium polymer battery that comes with a custom circuit board. That board handles charging and also has spring terminals to make contact with the GBA's motherboard, so no wiring or soldering is necessary. Retro 6 says it'll go for about 14 hours on a charge in a console with the IPS mod and amp kit like this one, and a new revision of the board will include the ability to trigger the GBA's power LED to show red when the charge is running low. It'll work in unmodified GBAs too, you just need to trim down a couple little bits of plastic and pull out the spring contacts. All put together, this handheld is awesome. The IPS screen continues to amaze me, and this replacement shell makes a huge difference in how the console feels when you hold it. This one has the so-called pearl finish, which has a slightly rubbery texture to it. It's not sticky, but rather just aids with grip. Something I don't know is how durable that finish will end up being over the long term. I wasn't able to make any marks with my fingernail, but if you regularly throw it like loose in a bag with other stuff, it might pick up some scuffs. Granted, any other shell would probably also show some wear in that situation, so if you're concerned about aesthetics, keeping it in its own pocket would be a good move. And if you don't like the idea of this finish at all, there are a couple of other versions that are plain plastic instead. 
but all of the Retro 6 shells have that drop-in compatibility with the IPS kit and also don't require any modding to support the clean juice battery. They include the spring contacts in case you'd rather use double A's instead, and you also have the option of getting the battery door with or without a hole in it for the clean juices USB-C connector for charging. Now the big deal with these shells, they aren't like the other reproduction ones out there. They use a brand new mold and higher quality plastics than what you'd often get. Everything fits together perfectly. There aren't any sharp edges between the two halves. All the details are nice and crisp, and it just feels super solid. It's nice to see a company go to these lengths because if for no other reason, it gives a more reliable option when buying a new housing. There's a ton of reproduction ones on the market, but their quality really varies. And because all of them look the same, it's hard to tell the difference just from photos. A shell may look okay on eBay, but end up feeling cheap and flimsy and not fit together right when you finally get it. Because Retro6 is putting their brand on these shells and offering them through well-known distributors, that makes them a much more consistent option. Even if the other features like that pearl finish or the battery support aren't interesting to you, in the very least, you just don't have to worry about whether the quality of the shell is going to be any good. So how much does all this cost? Well, I already had the GBA, but the IPS kit is a bit over $60 US. The screen spacers are like four bucks. The clean amp module is 10, the clean juice battery is 40, and the replacement shell is quite possibly the best deal of everything at 20 bucks. Let's say the whole thing is about 140 or so. Now, that may sound like a lot, and yeah, it kinda is, but good condition working AGS 101s typically sell for between 100 and 150 bucks on eBay, at least at the time this video went live. Of course, you could also mix and match which upgrades you do. Just the shell and IPS screen would be well under 100 bucks, and you'd still have a great experience. Either way, for a variety of consoles, the selection of mods we have access to now is incredible, and this is a great time to get into it if you're interested. And with that, I'm curious as to your thoughts. Is there a mod I missed for the GBA that you think is essential, or would you pick a different set of parts? Is there a console you wish had a specific mod but doesn't yet? Let me know down in the comments. Also, big thank you goes to Handheld Legend and Retro6 for sending these parts my way. I'll include links to them down in the description. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.